I'm not sure whether or not to apologize here because I'm not sticking to the schedule. Uh, there's only one game played on Thursday and it's played super late. And today, right now, I'm, I decided, fuck it. I just feel like doing it and getting it out of the way, so I'm going to do it because I might not be in the mood for it on Thursday. I'm kind of in the mood for it right now. So, here it is a day early. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I am your host Nathan Lyle and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I stand here in front of the camera and I talk about things that happened recently in the association and things I'm looking forward to the upcoming week. Today I'm doing it a day early because reasons. And let's get to the news that you want to hear first in case you didn't already know in the showdown between first and second place. You know, you have the Sparks versus the Lynx who had a tie and, you know, they, this game was to decide basically who wins first seed throughout the rest of the year and the Lynx won it. But it doesn't guarantee the first seed, it just gives them a heavy advantage because now not only are they a full game ahead of the Sparks, but they also own the tiebreaker so the Sparks cannot get that number one seed unless they have a better record than the Lynx, which means that even if the Sparks win every single game that they play from here to the end of the season, they still have to sit at home and just hope and pray that the Lynx can lose two games. The Lynx have to lose at least two more games than the Sparks win in order for the Sparks to overtake that number one seed. It's still a possibility, it's just not the most likely scenario. Because the Lynx, they're number one for a reason. They're a very strong team. And so, for the most part, I'm actually going to just ignore the three 20-win teams because the playoffs are pretty much set at the top. Now, the Lynx, they're very, very secure in that number one seed. There are very few scenarios in which they can actually manage to give that up. And then you've got the Sparks locked in at that number two. And then, of course, the Liberty, they're staying number three. I doubt that they're going to lose enough games that one of those other lower teams can overtake them, especially since those lower teams, it's questionable whether or not they'd be able to make it to 20 wins. Highly doubtful. And then... You know, they, they lo already lost the tiebreakers to both the Lynx and Sparks. So, like, I, I hardly believe that they would get enough wins to overtake them. Especially since we just don't have that many games left. And they, they don't have that many opportunities to overtake them. So, those first three seeds, it's basically set in place. The only reason I would talk about those three teams for the rest of the year would be either one, there's a major injury like Tina, Candice, Maya. If one of them goes down, of course I have to mention it. It has huge implications. But other than that, you know, if the Lynx lose two or three games in a row and it opens the door for the Sparks to take over, then I'll mention them. Other than that, I'm pretty much going to leave these three untouched for the rest of the year and focus exclusively on the ones who are still in the race. Because below them, you've got seven teams competing for five of the available spots. You, the stars have already been eliminated. The wings, technically they're not mathematically out of contention. They still have uh, the ability to climb back in. It just, it's damn near impossible. They're capable of doing it. The chance is still available to them, but does anyone really expect that? No, no they don't. You're lying if you say you do. Either that or you're just damn delusional. You a fool, son! I'm sorry about that. Anyways, the Wings, they haven't been eliminated yet, but they're like a loss away from it, basically. So, the, the, I'm not gonna bother talking about them unless somehow they do manage to go from now to the very end of the year without a single loss and somehow fight their way back into contention, which kinda hope that doesn't happen because I don't wanna see a team with 20 losses get into the playoffs. So I'm, even though uh, according to the website they have not officially been eliminated, that I'm eliminating them from my to sell, okay? In my head they're eliminated already, no need to mention them. And so the rest of the league, you've got the Sky 
and the Stream, they're tied at 15 and 14. Right behind them are the Fever at 14 and 15. They look fairly secure to get in, those three teams. It's not a certainty yet, but they would definitely have to lose a lot more games than they win in order for them to get knocked out. Now, they haven't clinched, so it is possible that if they just lose every game from here on out, they could still easily get fall out of the playoffs. I just, I don't see that happening unless Deladon has a major injury because she did get hurt in the game and she wasn't able to finish. And as of right now, I have no timetable that I can tell you. She might not miss any time at all. She could end up just sitting from here to the end of the season. I can't tell you anything. Like at this point in time, I have no information. You'll have to just check on that yourself. But for the most part, those teams look like they're pretty well cemented in the playoffs, barring major catastrophe. But there is still the possibility of them being pulled out. They'll have to be dragged out kicking and screaming, but the possibility still exists. And now the even more interesting teams, you've got the Mercury, you've got the Mystics, you got the Storm, and you got the Sun. The, the, Mist the Mercury and the Storm, they're tied they're tied, they've got the exact same record, they're half a game ahead of the Mystics who are one game ahead of the Sun. So you've got four teams separated by a total of a game and a half fighting for those last two playoff spots. And it's going to be a very interesting battle, especially because with the Mercury, I have no idea what happened to them this season. They've got a roster more than capable of winning a championship. In fact, I could argue that this roster looks better than the one that they did win the championship with. But they keep losing games, and they just keep sliding. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to expect from them. Like, at this point in time, nothing really shocks me. Uh, and... The storm, the mystics, the, it's hard to depend. It's hard to really have faith in them because they are young teams who have had their struggles. And the sun as well. They just started so poorly, and they do have some rough schedule, a, a schedule ahead of them. So uh, right now, there's just there's still a lot of potential that these seven teams could be doing so much shuffling before all of this is over. So long story short, in order to preserve time, I'm going to try to go more in depth on not just the games that are played, but the playoff impact that they have. And in order to shave time off of the end of the show, I won't talk as much in depth about games that are being played unless they have two teams that are in that middle seven fighting each other for the playoff seating. So before we move on, quick stop to look at the current standing. And now we move on to the games that are being played this week. As always, I will tell you which ones are currently scheduled to air nationally, which means everybody can watch them. But for the rest, you can either check your local listings or watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. And don't forget that I am saying these times in Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to adjust for your time zone. And as, and as I said earlier, I am going to focus more heavily on games where both of the teams are still fighting to determine their futures, whether or not they'll even be in the playoffs. So don't be mad at me if I glance over what looks like it'll be an exciting game. You're still free to watch it. You know, be sure to read the comment section because there's information down there that's not in my mouth words. But I also purposely leave out stuff in there and say it up here just because they only let you allow so many characters in that description. You can be mad at me all you want. I'm doing my damn best here. This is a one-man operation. So on Thursday, of course, you've still got the Dream versus the Sparks. Feel free to check that out. The Dream still have plenty to fight for, and the Sparks, as of now, there is still technically hope. It's just a long shot. Then on Thursday, you've got, on Friday, I mean, you've got a couple of games, four in action altogether. You've got the Sun versus the Liberty. You've got the Wings versus the Stars. The Stars, if they lose this game, I think that basically guarantees that first round draft, that first overall draft pick. But the Wings, they've lost like 11 in a row now. So I, really, whatever happens in this game, I'm just not going to be shocked at all by whatever the result might be. 
But the two games I'm looking forward to both played at 7 p.m. You've got the Storm versus the Mystics and the Sky versus the Fever. Sky and Fever, you know, if the Fever win, they'll both be tied at 500. They'll both be 15 and 15 teams. And it definitely makes the shuffling a whole lot easier. I have to see what the season series looks like to know who would own the tiebreaker. I'll look that up before I upload this and I'll leave it in the description. And then you've also got the Storm and the Mystics. They both won impressive games earlier today, beating the third and fourth seeded teams in the league. And now, you know, the Storm, if they win this game, they can be the a seventh seed. If they lose the game, they'll be the ninth seed. Whereas Mystics, if they lose the game, they might still be the eighth, ninth seed. But if they win, they'll be in the playoffs. On Saturday, there's not a single game being played. But on Sunday, like, the entire league is in action. You've got six games. Two of them are being on NBA TV. One of them, the Liberty versus the Wings. The other, the Sparks versus the Storm. But the games you really need to pay the most attention to, where, where the whole shuffling issue comes into play, you've got the Dream versus the Mercury, the Sky versus the Sun, and the Fever versus the Mystics. Because there's a good chance that with those seven teams in the middle of the pack, depending on the wins and losses that happen over the weekend with them fighting each other. Like, who knows what the standings will look like? Because the Fever, they've got 15 losses. If they lose two games this weekend, they could be end up getting, like, bounced. So yeah, that's it for this video, and this is mostly going to be the new format for the rest of the season, focusing not so much on each individual game and the accomplishments of the individual player, but just on the overall playoff impact that these past few days and the past few games have brought us. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Of the five teams that have not secured a playoff spot but still have hope, which do you think are the two that you would be the most shocked to not see them in the postseason? If you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. That way you'll be notified that as soon as my next video comes up. It will come up on Monday because there are too many games being played on Sunday. I won't be able to upload it early. Plus, I might be going to a barbecue at a French place. But that's not, that's more information than you actually needed to know. Long story short, next episode of WNBA Weekly will be up sometime on Monday. And until then, this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle, and I hope you have a great weekend.